Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I want to talk to you today on the subject matter, alternative God. We have been introduced to something called the alternative truths. And now I want to share with you the alternative God. Now, I think maybe Trump got used. I think he got played. Having the reputation uh, he has, I think the powers listened to him. And they wanted to watch his character for a period of time. You know, everyone knew that he was a crook. At least that's the way they made it appear when he decided to run for office. They decided to let him run wild to see if he could actually conquer America and end up in the White House. They gave him a little help, and he did. Then we realized that they supported him more than they have any other candidate for president, even more than the first black president. When I say supported, I'm talking about with propaganda. That means that he didn't pay for it. They gave it to him free. And he was used to stack the courts across the land. He was used to stack the Supreme Courts. And he was given a lot of other goodies, real goodies to the powers that be. Now, the fact that uh, he has been avoided prosecution for his misdeeds, it appears he is still being used to pollute the psychic of this nation with more confusion between lies and truths. Lies they call alternative truths which is which, then who is the deceiver? These are the questions. And every day, his lies live on. And it makes the people so much worse. Now, the action of this man has no good intentions for the American people. Not for the citizens of color and not for those that are white, not any of our sisters and brothers. His effort is bold and is brought across this nation. The resistance, my friends, must be equally as demanding that all evil actions are countered with righteousness, which, unlike evil, works for everybody. Now, <clears throat> you've heard it said that across the kitchen uh, table, the bread and butter discussions are taking place. What does that mean? It means that the people are feeling that they're being shafted, that anywhere and everywhere is time for a turn. It's time for a change. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about all of us. Now, the statement was made in 2016 that it was time for a change. But look what they got. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got a dictator. The people were looking for a dictator, and they are still looking for a dictator. They're looking for someone to force others to do their will. No, some might say force them to do right. But it's not, if they don't think it's right, it's forcing. You need a dictator that agrees with you to force everybody else to do your will. The problem is <clears throat> that the dictator replaces the other you. In other words, what you were fearing from the others, now you get from the dictator. 
Now, for me, as one chosen to study and see what's really going on in the world, and when I say one chosen to study, that means having gotten a real good knowledge of what's going on in the world by being participant participating in what's going on, the good and the bad, not the best good and not the worst worse, but participating. And then stepping outside of that to look and see and observe. But what is the motivation that causes me to observe in a proper, what I consider an effective manner, is that there's something happening in that arena that I just stepped out of that offends me. And it is. And what is it that offends me? Pain and suffering offends me. People that are hurting, people that are homeless, people that are going through these different kind of changes in life, that, cause, that causes me pain. And that allows me to step back out and see what's causing that stuff to happen, what's making it happen. Well, I know the dictators are not, at, not the answer. And so, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> the thing that I have observed is that what causes the problem is that people are selfish. People don't care about one another. And not caring about one another, they have not looked for a system that works for all. Capitalism is not to work for all. They might say it's open to all. You fail or lose. That's not working for all. And businesses all over the nation getting ripped off at businesses everywhere. If you don't know what's going on, if they don't have anything solid right there for you to know, then they can. They got a latitude, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Now you say, well, no, like for instance, I, you know, you take your car to the dealership. You don't know what's wrong. You trust them that they will tell you. And they are just like the senators in the White House, I mean in, in Washington. They tell you what they want you to know. So you go to your dealer or you go to get your car repaired. They tell you what they want you to know. And if you don't know any better, you don't have anything to check them. You just go with the flow. And all most of the times you get had. You think you don't? What happens when you see your gas tank is empty and you go to the gas pump and the price has been up jacked two or three dollars extra and you still getting a gallon of gas? What do you think is happening? What do you, you think? What do you think is happening? I mean, seriously, what do you think is happening that made that gas price jump up so high? Even if there was the gas was running out, why are the gas price is running up? I'm going, why are the gas prices running up? Why? Because the people who got more money, who's willing to pay, if the price went up to fifty dollars a gallon, they got it. And so you're sending up fifty dollars a gallon so you can make money, and other folks can't ride anywhere. Because money is a no one concern. That's what business is all about, ladies and gentlemen. It's about money. And when we got into this globalization, you remember those of you who've been around long enough, we got into globalization. What do you think the globalization was about? You think it was about helping people? You think about trying to help people all across the world who might be suffering from this or that? Yeah, it was helping them by getting their money. That is, a globalization is nothing but about trading across the world to get money, more money, more money. That's people just reaching that money, reaching that money, reaching that money. This is what's happening in the world today, reaching that money. <clears throat> now, what does humans need to live? Humans need food, clothing, shelter, education, and health care. They need these kind of things. Now, these are the, uh, the same kinds of things that any living thing needs to live except some live off of our well when it comes to food they might live off fruits and vegetables or grass and nuts and even some live by eating each other or eating other animals you can see it on these wild channels on cable and i'm telling you you it'll blow your mind to see uh, hyenas eating lions, the lion eating hyenas, and snakes eating elephants. I mean, this is absolutely what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. But the unique quality, you would think, of humans is that uh, they can think, they are rational, and they're logical, you know, and so on and so forth. They are f supposedly, for should be, or it is required that they be familiar with the system that accounts for the production of goods and services to the magnitude 
that all humans benefit having their needs met, their wants and their desires in the best way. But we don't have that. The alternative God reflects a situation where you got the haves and the have-nots. That's hell. And where did the have-nots come from? They got eaten by the haves. Now, Jesus, for those of you who have tried to talk religion, is <clears throat> whole, has a whole message. And I think I can say it to you in a few words. <clears throat> Whether Jesus is real or not, the message, he is a message. Maybe human beings came from heaven. And they found some problems living in heaven. And so they wanted and they have earned a trip to earth to live here. And to live here means to live a part of this, be a part of this world, everything. Not heaven, but be a part of this. But you have an opportunity to learn, to grow, to mature. And if in that process, something happens and you wake up, you wake up. What does that basically mean, waking up? Seeing the world that you're living in and comparing it with another world that now you can see. And what kind of world is that? That's a world where none of this bull, no, no lying, no cheating, no stealing, no killing, no terror, no war, no racism, no hatred. None of that stuff is going on. You can see that. And you're looking at and you're living in a world where this stuff is taking place. And so you begin to act against it. You begin to tell people, hey, you're living in hell. This doesn't happen. This is not supposed to happen. Because now you can see. And the one that got sight, the one who can see, is supposed to lead the blind. The blind are not supposed to lead the people that can see. So when you look at people and all this pain and suffering is going on, that's telling you that blind people are running everything. And there's nobody out that can see. Because all of the initiatives, all of the efforts, every protest that they're trying to deal with doesn't do anything to end the problem. It becomes like a bandage, whatever comes, if anything comes of it. Because they can't see. Or, yeah, they can't see. Because if you could see, the message that Jesus said is this. There is nothing in this world, once you can see, that is about life, real life heavenliness. And so to have your eyes open, you have a choice. You can reject this. You can reject every human being on earth can reject this hell anytime they want to. What is the key? Death. Am I talking about committing suicide? I'm saying the key to get out of hell is death. To get out of hell is death. Now, what does that basically mean? It means to resist this stuff. Resist this pain and suffering that is happening to this world. <clears throat> well, let me tell you one more minute. America, people of color, you know, our, whatever we thought we had a progress, you got lawyers, you got had president, and you got all kind of positions, just like white folks, you see? But we are still people of color. And we are still considered just the same as we were considered then, second-class citizens. And now, because of the last president that they had and how he was able to spur up and get energized, all this other hatred and stuff, they want to try to say they can take you back to when you didn't have a voice at all. Now, that's real. That's real. So if anybody sit here trying to keep from drowning, if that's all you're trying to do, then you should drown. The message of Jesus Christ is to hell with the stuff. So in other words, you come out of there fighting for the best that this nation can ever have. That every citizen got their needs met. Every citizen got their desires and, 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 that, and that, that dreams are coming true. 
you stand up for that. Why? Because the resources are free. And the only thing that's missing is a system of compassion, a system that would produce heavenliness here. And it does not exist because everybody here is saying it's okay. Jesus says it's not okay. And if they have to die, if you have to die to get out to mean it, to prove it, then die to prove it. Because if you ain't dying to prove it, then you're ex accepting it. Martin Luther King died to prove it. Malcolm X died to prove it. Gandhi died to prove it. And many others died to prove it that I don't know their names. But if you think this world is hell and you don't want to have anything to do with hell, then stand up to change this mess and die to prove it. And if you ain't dying to prove it, that means you're putting up with it. Uh, you hear me? I don't mean to be messing with you. But I want you to know you can get out of these corners talking your little talk, thinking that you got something special going on, thinking that you some outstanding person. I see you with those microphones up there talking on cable, trying to put other folks down because you think you're a little bit better. But I want you to know, my friends, if you are not standing up against the stuff and trying to make stuff work for everybody, you are part of that mess. So you can stop talking. And the truth of it is, that here's the ultimate key. If you're against this world and you're for heaven and God's way, you'll get out of it. <clears throat> and somebody says, well, I can be for God's way and stay over here. I know you can. That's what they call the alternative God. He accepts that stuff. The real God says, you're not putting up with anybody. If I see a nappy head, little black boy over there, or any boy of color, hurting and and i'm i'm hurting just as much as he hurting and if i saw a white kid over there hurting i'm hurting just as much as that kid and who would be sitting there saying, oh he's white oh i don't care or oh he's black i don't care i know who would do that an alternative hypocrite no oh, no a real hypocrite <laughs> anyway ladies and gentlemen i think you got my message thank you so very much for giving me these 16 minutes i didn't probably have but another minute left oh i probably don't even have that until next time eddie marcus saying goodbye